The wolf is the world's largest dog, a top predator and an iconic animal that roamed freely across North America for tens of thousands of years. But in the early 20th century, a ruthless war was waged against these cunning carnivores in an effort to stop them preying on livestock. This resulted in the gray wolf being almost completely wiped out in the continental US. But then in 1995, a controversial wolf recovery program began in Yellowstone with surprising results. Here's my journey in search of America's elusive canine. This is the most remote area in the contiguous United States. The world's first national park, Yellowstone. I'm landing at Lone Mountain Ranch. It's a National Geographic unique lodge. I'm just a short drive away from Yellowstone National Park where there is an abundance of wildlife. 5,000 bison. And then they've got grizzly bears and also wolves. And that is the animal that I'm going in search of. Wolves were effectively wiped out in Yellowstone, eradicated for more than 70 years after a bounty was put on their head. Without this apex predator, the balance of Yellowstone's ecosystem was thrown completely out of whack. Animals overgrazed, trees and grasses vanished, vast tracts of the once great wilderness were stripped bare. Today, there are about 100 wolves roaming Yellowstone National Park, a sprawling territory more than three times the size of Rhode Island. The wolves are out there, but they're hard to find, which is why we're hooking up with Doug Smith. Doug is the lead wolf biologist in Yellowstone. How you doing? Welcome to Yellowstone. Oh, thanks very much. Yeah, we got a good day, fresh snowfall. This is wolf weather. I got a crew on that butte right there, right at this moment, tracking wolves. What are the chances of us seeing a wolf near? Well, it's really hard to find them. I'm just going to do a listen. This plateau here. You can actually work out where they are. That's kind of oh, cool. Oh, yeah. Well, we, these wolves, we call it in December. And uh, they've been hanging around here. I'm not getting a signal here. This is 1108. Go ahead. Yeah, Jack, uh, do you have any visuals up there? Uh, I believe they're on the back side, and then we're on the west side right now. So they're all around us, but trying to pick them out of the wilderness is tough. But we'll go out and see what we can find. All right, all sounds right. good. Now, there's some bison tracks here, some elk as well. That's mostly what the wolves are after. They don't like preying on the bison so much. I think for obvious reasons. Yeah. <laughs> Size matters. It does. Yeah. Doug. <sighs> Off in the distance there. Bison. Oh, man. They may look docile, but bison are one of Yellowstone's most dangerous inhabitants. With adults weighing over a ton, they're the largest land mammal in North America. Despite their size, they're incredibly agile and can reach speeds up to 35 miles an hour and have a history of charging humans if they feel threatened. We're going to have to belly around them. Skirt around them. Yeah. I like that idea. Yeah. So it's a two million acre park, and how many wolves in all of Yellowstone do you think? About 100. So that's a pretty tough challenge. Oh, yeah, well, we radio collar them. All our studies are based upon having marked wolves. Yeah, that one runner behind looks good. OK, go ahead, Blake. Okay. Doug and his team can only keep track of the wolves if they catch and collar them, ready? Yep. which they do once a year, midwinter. Doug's in, Doug's in. Got it? This is a standard VHF collar. It's a pup, so we can't put the collar on too tight. It will still grow. We do a full physical exam, and these are fully developed adult teeth. And there's not much wear here. This is a wolf probably in the prime of its life. 
monitoring the wolves' growth, 122. as well as taking blood samples, provides important data of the pack's overall health, genetic makeup, and exposure to disease. A little bit of mange here. This pack's been suffering from that. This is a two-year-old. She bred this year, we think, from field observations. Those teats are larger than normal. With the birth of each new cub, or the death of an elder, the pack's numbers fluctuate. So Doug's team has to track down these collared wolves again in late winter. That's what we're doing now. But as I'm experiencing firsthand, finding them is no simple task. No signal. No signal, OK. But I'm here in the plane, so that's probably our best bet. Wait and see what they get. Plane always gets them. He's got antennas strapped to the strut of the wing to track the wolves. So when he gets them, he's going to call us. Good morning, just checking to see if you guys have had any luck seeing your wolf. They are in Oxo. They are just on the west side of the creek. That's right here. We saw some signals from Upper Colorado, but we haven't gotten them before yet. So that big white slope is where another pack is. That's Upper Hell Roaring. OK, wish I had a suggestion for you, but maybe they'll come out later. Good luck, Becca. So we've got two packs stacked up right here. So we're surrounded by wolves, but can't see any. Wow, Welcome to wildlife biology. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see if we can help the crew find them. Yep. See if you see a bone or something exposed. That's what we're looking for. And you know what? That's ribs. Yeah? A dead elk. You got eagle eyes. You want to pull it up? There you go. Yeah. Oh, wow. Where these rib bones are bitten right off, that would be the work of a wolf? Or coyote. So, so this would have been how big? Oh, geez, this is a, a, a full-grown bull elk. So we're talking? 750 pounds. And this is all that's left, pretty much? Well, there's going to be other bones in here. Oh, I don't yeah. know if we'll find more. Oh, there's a lot of blood in there, look. This is proof positive that these wolves killed it, and it bled. And it goes into the snow, and that is something we use as a, a, a tip that it was killed. I guess we're a little late to dinner. We are. We're going to keep working. Just when it seems we may never encounter any of these reclusive predators. Wait a second, Phil. Doug gets a tip from a fellow ranger. And so what was her tip? It was just down the road here? Yes. In the middle of Mar Valley, the pack of wolves is visible on a kill. But we'll see if we can find it. Sounds good. Maybe on top of that mound. We're trying to get set up. There's only three wolves. And I'm just trying to see if I can get glimpses. So we're looking a mile and a half away to try to pick out a wolf that <laughs> is pretty camouflaged out there. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm not finding him. So, Doug, this could be our last shot at this, huh? It might be. I mean, wait a second, Phil. You should check this out. Oh, yeah, I got him. Oh, wow. Wow, oh, that, that is amazing. They're single file on a trail, classic wolf travel. It looks like a scent trail they're on, maybe. A little bathroom break. <laughs> wow, that is spectacular stuff. They really are moving. Yeah. She's in deep snow now. Changing the lead here. I can't believe we picked out two wolves maybe a mile and a half away. Yeah. Now, there should be a third. I mean, the third wolf in their pack might be over there. Well, hold on. That is that a wolf? On the ridge. Oh, yeah. She's mama of that other female. Oh, my god. You can hear it howling. Amazing. You know, there's three ways to experience a wolf. You see it, you see their tracks, but hearing them howl is by far the best of the three. Whoa, there they go. 
they picked her howl up. So they're headed over towards their mama now? Yeah, they're looking for her. You know, a big part of wolf life is their social nature. This is just extraordinary. This is what we came for. Oh, yeah. I mean, I can't believe how lucky you got.